Hi scholars, let's look at TEEK 4.4F. I can use strategies and algorithms, including the standard algorithm, to divide up to a four-digit number by a one-digit divisor. So this video is only focused on standard algorithm for long division. I'm going to start with two-digit divided by one digit, do three-digit divided by one digit, four-digit divided by one digit. So let's get started. Before we get started, these are the steps for long division, and I always remember it by does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers regularly? Now, um, the first section is you're just going to go through the steps once, and so you will not do the bring down or repeat steps. You will just divide, multiply, subtract, check, and then whatever's left over is your remainder. If you have to go through the steps again, you're going to do divide, multiply, subtract, check, bring down, repeat your steps, and then you'll do divide, multiply, subtract, check, bring down, and then it'll be remainder. But if you end up repeating again, you go through it again. You keep repeating until you have nothing left to bring down, and then it's your remainder. So you're going to be hearing me, you know, using that terminology again and again through the video. So just be familiar with it. So long division is very easy. It's the same steps over and over. I strongly, strongly recommend that if you are weak in multiplication, that you put a multiplication table out to the side. So let's say you have 25 divided by 3. Okay, I would just make a chart for the 3's, like 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9. You don't even have to do that. You can also just list it. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. You don't even need to go to 30 because you need to stay under 9. So just list the first 9 multiples of 3. So what you do is you see how many times 3 can go into the this number. So 3 can't go into 2, but 3 can go into 25. The most times it can go in is this many, which is 8. So it can go in 8 times. And so that's your first step, division. Your second step is to multiply. You multiply 8 times 3, which would be this 24. So when you're doing this, you're saying, the best I can do is 8, and that would be 24. Okay? Your next step is to subtract. You subtract that, and you have 1 left over. So you're saying, the best I can do is a 3 by 8, and there will be one piece left over. Now, I want to quickly talk about what this symbol means. This is actually an array. They are saying that this is an 8 by 3 array, and there will be 24 in it, and there will be 1 left over. So that's why when they say 25 divided by 3, the best is 3 times 8, and then there will be 1 extra. This is the side of an array, and you are saying that these are the two dimensions. Let's look at another one. 31 divided by 6. So 6 goes into 31. They're basically saying, what's the best array you can make where 6 is on one side and, you know, I want, to, I want it to be 31. I want the product to be 31. So you can say, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I can make a 6 by 5. So the closest, the best I can do is a 6 by 5, which will be 30. So I divide it, which is 5. I multiplied, which is 6 times 5 equals 30. Then I'm going to subtract, and then 31 minus 30 equals 1. And so then you make that your remainder. So you're saying I can make a 6 by 5, which will be 30, and there will be 1 left over, and that's why, you know, 31. Okay, here's another one, 39 divided by 4. So they're saying I have an array. One side will be 4. I want to get 39 to fit in this array. So you can say, well, the best I can do, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I can make a 9 by 4. And a 9 by 4 is going to be 36 in that array. So if I have like a 9 by 4, okay, and they want 39, well, there's going to be 3 left over on the side. That's why when you subtract, you get, it's called your remainder of 3. Okay, let's look at one more. 41 divided by 5. 
Here are my multiples of 5. So if they're asking me 41 divided by 5, I have an array, 41 is the product, 5 is going to be on one side, what's the best you can do as far as making an array? So you can say, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I can make a 9, oh, actually, no, that's too much, sorry. I can make an 8 by 5, and that will give me 40, okay? So if I have 40 in there, then that means there will be one left over. So an 8 by 5 with one left over. So your answer would be 8 remainder 1. Okay, 13 divided by 2. So if they want an array and one side has to be 2 and they tr want to get 13 in there, so the best we can do closest to 13 is 12. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 2 goes into 13. So a 2 by 6 is 12. There will be one left over. Whoops. Let me just draw a visual so you can see what's going on. You're saying there's a 2 by 6. Okay, there's 12 in here. They want 13. So what you're saying is, well, you'll have a 2 by 6, and then you'll have like one piece left over. So here's your 12 plus 1, 13 pieces. Okay, let's look at this. This, you're going to go through the steps twice. So it's really important that you master the, the first few clips of video I showed you before um, you look at this video. So now you're not going to do 2 goes into 37. You're going to do 2 goes into 3. So 2 goes into 3 one time. Okay? Because this is the closest to 3 without going over. So 2 times 1 is 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay? Now, you've been doing the divide, multiply, subtract, and all that. Now... When you're done, there's a step called bring down. You bring down the 7. And now you're going to do 2 goes into 17. I usually tell my scholars when they're first learning to make this a new division problem so it'll help them. So I'm like, now think 2 goes into 17 how many times? So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So that's 8 times. So you're going to put the 8 up here. You're going back to the beginning. 2 goes into 17 8 times. Multiply. 8 times 2 equals 16. I have a lot of students that will do 18 times 2. Don't do that. This one, you're done using it. It's 8 times 2 equals 16. Because you're saying, I want an array where there's 17 in it and there's 2 on the side. So you're telling them, well, the best I can do is an 8 by 2 and it'll be 16 in that array. So when you do 17 minus 16, you'll have 1 left over. Okay, and so then it's 18 remainder 1. Okay, let's do another one. 3 goes into 4. The closest to 4 without going over is this one, so it'll only go in one time. So that's my division. My multiplication, 3, goes, uh, three times 1 is 3. Subtract, 4 minus 3 is 1. So usually everyone's pretty good on there, and then the next step is bring down that 6 and now you have to do 3 goes into 16, okay? The closest to 16 is this one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, okay? So that would be 15, so you put that here. 16 minus 15 is 1, so my answer is 15 remainder 1. So if you look at this as a whole, you're saying... Well, if you want 46 in here, the best I can do is a 3 by 15, and a 3 by 15 equals 45. And so then, you know, you want 46, so then you'll have like 1 left over. And that's where 15 remainder 1 comes from. That's what's being modeled here in this division problem. All right, let's look at this one. This one is 96 divided by 8. 8 goes into 9 one time, okay, because... If I do 2, then that's 16. Well, 16 is more than 9. So 1 time. 8 times 1 is 8. 9 minus 8 is 1. Bring down the 6. Now you're doing eight, 16 divided by 8. 8 goes into 16 actually perfectly twice. 
So 2 times 8 equals 16. 16 minus 16 equals 0. So my answer is 12. And in this situation, if they say, well, I want an array, and I want 96 in there, and I want 8 over here, you can say, well, a 12, a 12 by 8 is perfect. 12 times 8 is 96. So that works out perfectly. There's no remainder. Okay, let's look at this, 56 divided by 3. So don't do 3 goes into 56 how many times? Do just 3 goes into 5. So 3 goes into 5 one time. So there's my division, my multiplication, 3 times 1. And sometimes I tell students to do this to help them remember. 3 times 1 is 3. 5 minus 3 is 2. Bring down that 6. Now I'm doing 26 divided by 3. Looking at this list, 24 is the closest. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. 8 times 3 is 24. So you can see I did 8 times 3, not 18 times 3. 26 minus 24 equals 2. So 18 remainder 2. Okay, let's look at another example, but this time we're going to be dividing into a three-digit number. So 2 goes into 8 four times. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. So then you bring down the 2, and now you're going to do 2 divided by 2. 2 goes into 2 one time. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. Bring down the 3. 3 divided by 2. 3 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. So my answer is 411 remainder 1. This is really easy. You just have to keep following the pattern. Make sure you go do the steps in order. Make sure you put the numbers in the right spot. Let's look at another one. 654 divided by 3. 3 goes into 6 2 times. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. Bring down the 5. 5 divided by 3. 3 goes into 5 one time. 1 times 3 is 3. 5 minus 3 is 2. So usually students are okay here, and then they, they get stuck, and they forget they have to bring down another number. So now it's 24 divided by 3. 3 goes into 24 eight times. I'm using this as my guide. Put 8 at the top, and I always just kind of connect the 8 to the 3 to remind myself to multiply. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 minus 24 equals 0. So 218 remainder 0. When you have nothing left here to bring down, that's when you know it's your stopping point. But like let's say there was like a 5 here and I got 0. I have to bring that 5 down and repeat the steps again. Okay, so 4 goes into 5 one time. 1 times 4 is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. Bring down the 7. 17 divided by 4. 4 goes into 17 4 times. 4 times 4 is 16. 17 minus 16 equals 1. Bring down the 9. 4 goes into 19 5 times. 5 times 4, actually, I take that back. <laughs> it goes in 4 times. 4 times 4 is 16. 19 minus 16 equals 3. So it's 144 remainder 3.